Hi, I'm Kalpana Singh, founder and CEO of Channel Connect, one of the CXO TV brand under the umbrella of Tech Plus Media Group. And you're watching Alpha Women, our new series to host such exemplary women leaders who have been scripting the growth story for themselves, their own and their organization with zeal, dedication and unswerving commitment. So the Alpha Women joining me today is Ms. Sindhya Bala Singh. Sindhya is an experienced technology marketing expert heading global marketing at Vajro and Vajro is a cloud based mobile commerce platform which lets e-commerce create mobile shopping apps for their stores. Sindhya has earned many awards and accolades and she is passionate about women leadership and diversity. A very warm welcome to you Sindhya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah and thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. I'm glad So, Sindhya, though marketing is a male-dominating sector, it's uh, really it's uh, really heartening to see that women like you hasn't stopped from thriving in your profession. So, if we can talk about your professional journey so far and few events which made you what you are today, um, it's an interesting question. Maybe like in few podcasts, I would have mentioned this already. Sorry if I'm being repetitive here. i have to go way back of number of years in fact um, during my childhood the most enjoyable play or enjoyable game i do is uh, having my own office so i'll sit in a table chair and i'll arrange all the dolls as my team you know i don't know where i got that from maybe from my uncle or someone i don't know. but i always like one telephone of my own and one office of my own from that age i was always uh, working towards that so um i didn't know that as which profession i will get that but i always wanted to have my own office that's how uh, my dream journey started i should uh, say then slowly like any other uh, people btech it happened and uh, i understood clearly that coding and me are in two different directions so i wanted to do something differently then um, i had a feeling that i'm very good at people and i wanted to manage team i wanted to uh, grow in the management sector so i picked up uh, mba so I, the moment i entered into mba when i sat in the classes i understood that uh, this is meant for me um and marketing i fell in love with marketing and that time i decided that i am going to be marketing that to not as a business analyst or a content writer i am going to be a field marketer i am going to run on the streets i am going to do events execute i was very clear so um i was a gold medalist in my college and uh, i got numerous offers uh, from tcs cts multiple organizations on business analyst but i turned down everything and i was very clear that i wanted to be a film marketer many felt that the decision i have taken was not intelligent enough and a lot of people told me um, you know including my uh, uh, director uh, of the college my parents everyone felt that i'm being very choosy and um, without understanding and turning down uh, great offers but somewhere i had a feeling that i have to go behind what i like because i wanted to make that office and sit happily inside the office not like the sake of sitting inside the office so blue star happened for me um they the first month of my word broke because we uh, in mba also we have been always taught or in movies also it has been always shown that straight away you'll sit in boardroom talk uh, you know strategies <laughs> and uh, so on because in mba also all you read is strategy four p's you know um, all those things ttm and multiple things when i entered i understood that uh, you will not be let near any of the closer ones not not possible <laughs> so first you have to run around get your uh, in fact i remember that i used to send couriers i used to pack along with security people send everything but i didn't never felt bad rather i took that as a joy i just thought uh, that made me to understand that it's not an easy way to just like that it's not going to happen i have to start somewhere and a um, lot of hurdles will come a lot of uh, uh, you know not liking things may happen but you have to do it i took that uh, resilience as my oath and i started the journey and i used to get a lot of scoldings from my manager i used to run around uh, you know couriering uh, check in fact i have been put to manage the varos of the catalogs uh, still i i started implementing pies there both did some cost uh, cutting so i i started enjoying those small small things from there um, in a common industry event reading can happen for me 
so i'm so lucky um, a lot of inbound things happened for me reddington is also like that the president of reddington met me in a common event and told me uh, hey uh, we want to experiment marketing as a function why don't you join us our first member of the team somewhat it excited me a lot immediately i said yes without even discussing on the salary or nothing i just said yes and uh, when i came and happily told uh, my home uh, obviously everybody was very upset because blue star is very well said um, and uh, this is a distribution organization why somebody has to take an call like this and no one was happy <coughs> so uh, when i told everyone was against it somewhat my heart said that I'm, i have taken a right decision i went ahead and joined um because when i chose blue star everybody said wrong decision now they don't want me to leave red blue star so i don't ask <laughs> people opinion because of that so i went to reddington and uh, marathon 6 years of journey it was a very great journey a contrast to the three years of blue star year was formation of a function team i was recruiting i been a first manager uh, you know first team um how to build a team i was uh, learning i was amazing experience and 6 years i was able to do the function but i had a different challenge here so i was the only young women leader so a um, lot of that bias diversity uh, issues um uh, you know uh, those things i started learning and um, i started seeing people around me not uh, stepping up especially as women because of various factors so all those things was growing inside me that something i have to do about it something i have to do about it and i always used to do whatever best i can do from there six years i got very comfortable i have a bad habit when i get very comfortable i'll feel bored so i started getting bored so i want to do something more i was just thinking i don't know it's universe or whatever it is next day i got an inbound request from fresh trucks for building isv marketing function from scratch um uh, sounded interesting because i wanted to get into saas and uh, uh i that sucks was growing again isp marketing if i enter i can know about all the brands in the world because reddington when i chose was also that was the reason because i want i will get into it sector and i will get to work with all the major brands same way i'll do it with freshers so i started there three years amazing journey again i got comfortable i thought of asking a different role in freshers then was to happen they wanted to um, build their entire um, marketing avenue uh, somewhere when lot of my previous managers or everyone said that i was not ready for such a big gamut but i always felt that i'm ready i wanted to know why i'm not ready but here somebody else felt that i'm ready so i thought like oh, okay why not take a chance and go and do something more to it that's how i joined uh, here this is my first week in vajro as uh, head of global marketing i, I hope that i will create an eternal another uh, good journey for myself and vajro uh, in this new position new capacity finally my childhood uh, dream came uh, true kalpana because i'm <laughs> sitting in my own cabin now <laughs> i have my own office. finally <laughs> i was looking at my 9 year old myself and telling that hey sunday you made it but from here to keep this going you need to do lot lot more things so don't sit back and relax get ready to run your marathon you're going to sit in the seat rather than you would run all around So that's, that's quite an amazing uh, journey, journey yeah <laughs> so you know there are a few questions while you were telling me i was thinking of that you said that uh, you used to keep those dolls and you know imagine of having an office of your own a cabin of your own so um, was it that you had some entrepreneurs in your family i mean your parents or your father or someone or uh, uh, actually uh, rather it's contrasting uh, my entire family mostly they were in government in fact So okay. my uncle, uh, my uncle was an IAS officer. I was very close uh, to him. So I used to visit his office all the time and used to see his cabin, how he sits and conduct meetings. So some from that time, I always used to feel that I will sit and you know do those meetings. That's how <laughs> it all started. Okay, okay. And so you were telling about Reddington. So at that time, uh, how many females you saw? You know your colleagues. If you ask me, colleagues, yeah, there may be. quite handful but a uh, leadership position none none okay so, yeah so um that's that made it initially i saw one after that she got uh, retired and moved on and then uh, branch managers here and then one or two but not in the corporate office then the whole six years in corporate office we never had uh, functional leads or uh, business unit leads as female that never happened 
Yeah, yeah. So Riddington, I guess, Mr. Niyogi was at the helm. Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we i mean uh, under tech plus media before we had cxo tv we we had it war news <laughs> yeah, oh, okay i used to work with them yeah yeah, yeah. okay so um, then uh, you know you you uh, came to freshworks and uh, like you were taking care of the marketing of isvs so again you know my question is like uh, what was your experience uh, when when it comes to isv i mean the saas companies how many women leaders you found you, you have seen during your uh, tenure at freshworks so freshworks if i have to be honest amazing company uh, almost 50, 45% of women were there even in the leadership positions yeah they had maybe but of struggle in engineering and um, a product uh, but marketing um, sales and all we had good number of uh, women leaders they actively promoted diversity and i was chairing the india diversity council for them so whatever i was not able to um, do in reddington i tried uh, here uh, in that capacity and also because of that only i represent lot of forums on women women leadership and all. in freshworks i never had that feeling of being alone uh, feeling never i had but in the peer industry still isv partner side i get to meet very less women leaders again i used to interact with lot of again uh, male uh, colleagues male partners then female uh, mostly mm-hmm. that is also there so i know quite a few uh, women leaders you know founders who have been running saas companies for more than two decades and surely we'll will be hosting them <laughs> in <Yeah>. our upcoming <laughs> sessions yeah <laughs> and you get a chance to see them yeah so yeah i have seen like uh, uh, girish uh, you know he i have heard him and he he is a kind of a versatile person and i'm sure the even the the, the culture at freshworks would have been great definitely so it's so in, like now in virtual yeah. we are budding uh, company and we are upcoming and i i another reason for me to choose virtual is now i can create something right now along with uh, leaders you know i'm in the leadership capacity i'll be able to do uh, something and bring in this diversity uh, happy work culture so i'll be able to take some decisions and do that's another reason i chose to come here yeah sure so uh, uh, sindhya what are the top three learnings you had as a women leader across your professional journey uh, top learning i would call it as self love because it's very very important when you have self love self confidence self belief everything will come so you need to start loving yourself don't be hard on yourself it's okay sometimes now i'm also learning to be honest um still i love myself very much i love to display myself uh, very much that's why i am pretty decent in personal branding and i'm a big advocate of personal branding because i admire myself a lot and whatever i do I, it is always like me for like how will i like sindhya to be seen uh, uh, that's how i have always mode uh, if sindhya is securing a what i will like sindhya so there is uh, doing interviews with you like this i will like sindhya if sindhya build an awesome team i like sindhya if sindhya is able to perfectly balance um, work and the pro- uh, personal life then i will love sindhya that's how i build myself so self love is very key but still if you ask me are you mastered uh, mastering yourself in that sindhya no because still if a minor mistake happens also i used to be very hard on myself how oh, can you do this why you did this you shouldn't have so you, you cannot be 100% perfect sometimes you should be able to be happy with whom you are and uh, pat yourself that is something i'm i'm getting better at it and i'm still a lot of too scope much into that. introspection here yeah. too much kind of introspection yeah yeah now i i stop sometimes if some mistakes happen okay it's okay move on so that that maturity is coming now so uh, self love is very key for your inner happiness and for you to excel uh, personally and professionally that's my um, key this thing because unfortunately i keep saying this um, our society and uh, uh, movies made us to feel that women who are not talking about themselves who are very silent who are doing everything for others sacrificing their own life for others are the great uh, women with core family values rest all are selfish uh, you know spoiled generation unfortunately so that's why people don't do self love or personal branding so um, first the smith has to be broken and self love has to happen that's the one and then breaking the barriers every stage i had a barrier like for example when i got married people said you got married now you can't travel you can't be in marketing 
i broke and moved then when i i became a mother they said now gone over you can't be head of a function because you your work is like in a weekly four times you need to travel no way you will be doing that they broke the barrier and then now um, they said you are very young and your aspiration is too high you wanted to head a function i think you need to wait for another 6 7 years broke the myth and i'm sitting here still like now they are saying okay maybe uh, here being a small company or able to do but in a um, very large organization maybe since you can't do i will break that also so and vajro will grow as a big organization and i'll i'll break that also i know that so um, breaking the barriers is very 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 important and then third learning if you ask me putting your learnings into practice out of every day is a learning for us you will learn so many things i used to tell my team also don't make two mistakes again right you know there are a lot of mistakes you can make and learn why you have to make the same mistake again and again okay do different mistakes so same way a lot of learnings will happen every day so those learnings how are you smartly using and applying that makes you as a coach kalpana yeah day three absolutely i completely completely agree with you that uh, you know first thing is that uh, women actually you know they they don't love themselves and uh, the the uh, the kind of uh, stereotypes we have in the society is very demotivating i mean uh, two years now into the covid 19 pandemic and women are uh, you know even more burned out than they were last year uh, i would say increasingly more uh, so than the men despite this women leaders are stepping up to support employee well being and diversity equity and inclusion efforts but that work is not getting recognized correct so yeah yeah so i think it's really important for us to to get uh, you know ourselves noticed get ourselves recognized that, that's true. really important yeah so um, while we are seeing uh, increasing participation from women in technology a uh, lot needs to be done to achieve gender equality in this space so when it comes to women's representation in key decision making roles what are the challenges you see which are keeping the women representations at the lower end see uh, again i would say that partially true partially stereotype um, there is always a myth and a fear that if we keep women in a key decision making roles they may be unavailable at an emergency situation they feel that uh, they have to take care of their kids they will have uh, they will go on maternity leave or they will uh, take sick leaves because their kids are not well uh, they will take leaves when their kids are having exams or um, they um, they wanted to go home soon uh, they will not travel um, they will not have a, a, will not be comfortable to have social dinners so these kind of preconceived stereotypes prevents manage meant from hiring women for key decision making roles that's the major challenge but what i would say is it is not for women or men it depends upon what the individual wants so here that's i will true. tie this back to our self love right so if you want your career this way so i was very clear from the beginning to my parents and to my husband and to uh, everyone in the family to my in laws that this is how i want it to be i want that family to support and you please enable this part for me you'll be proud of myself you'll be proud of me that's what i told them and fortunately they are doing because i strongly believe that if they are in love with you they will do what you want and the, you, they will definitely create that support system so i am not asking women to be my way or my way but to come in the middle path and carry on there are a lot of great leaders who are doing that extremely well but unfortunately the stereotype of generally women have to take care of their kids or have to cannot travel husbands will not allow these stereotypes are there in the mind of management it's not in a wrong way also something say for to quote an example when i was carrying when i was pregnant i wanted to travel but in my company they were kept on saying that no no you are this thing they not even considered me for important meetings travel meetings then i went and fought i wanted to go who <laughs> has you to take a call on my big up i will go so that was a big challenge for me to make people understand everybody started advising me oh you are taking your kid like easily oh, i know what i want if i am able yeah, to do it notions, i will do yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this kind of unconscious bias is the biggest challenge women are fighting today to get into the key decision to 
so i'll not entirely blame one race of race for this so even women have a problem so uh, it may be controversial but if you think deeply even um, we also have this uh, uh, a problem of expecting a special treatment from uh, when we are comfortable we will say that hey i am a woman how can they ask me to do all these things we will be but when we are not uh, we are, when we are not comfortable we will say we will tell see being a woman they are doing this to me so this also should not be there so if you are getting into this just forget you are a female male just if you are claiming for equality behave equally then yeah. you can come in that position so both way it has to come they have to open up the stereotypes and come this way and we have to break that barrier and come this way absolutely so please talk about your recent initiatives to promote women leadership heard you in the podcast also <laughs> so uh, that's a passion project uh, um, kalpana so uh, for me i always was struggling for an inspiration from uh, fellow women leaders as i told you ask me right how many women leaders you have seen and reading that that was my formative years so uh, when everyone came and told me that you can't do this you can't do that i wanted to ask a women leader who has done that already and i want to look up to them and ask them how they did it but never got a chance unfortunately so always it was burning in me so when i got a chance the first thing i did was okay i am going to post amazing women leaders you know and i am going to bring in people and i am going to share their stories to the world i am going to celebrate them and make people to get inspiration from them that's how the leader started and it got really accelerated when one of my um, uh, male friend told me that uh, do you have that many women leaders to interview so that i had a trigger in me that hello <laughs> so uh, now the season 1 is over we are on season 2 and uh, yes, i still yes, i have a yes. line up of uh, uh, leaders to be in uh, and lot of people who were ping me saying that hey sandhya we got a lot of inspirations uh, uh, from you i was i am so happy uh, so indeed it's a yeah. great initiative uh, sandhya i must say and i must congratulate you and uh, uh, and it you know it make lot of sense for women to actually mentor men <laughs> correct true <laughs> the conversation should be around that <laughs> yeah and i always tell that uh, don't keep any separate session for women i just keep for men and tell them to treat us like them you know don't see us differently so please mm-hmm. frame them that's and there is a gender say. equality yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> So let's talk about your interest areas and hobbies outside your professional life. I like to read a lot of Tamil classics. So if I really in a free mind I will write Tamil poems too. So all big big books of like Kalki, Sandilyan, all that uh, I uh, um, read a lot. Then I converted that passion into the podcast because now uh, in my free times I do interviews like this. I love talking, so I thought, okay, let me channelize that properly. That's how that podcast came. And um, whoever comes and asks uh, interview, in fact, I don't even check that how many followers they are having or uh, how many uh, how much reach, what promotion they will do. Nothing. I'll feel okay. They they feel that some value I can add. Let me go and add value. So I'll carve out my personal time mostly here now. sometimes i want to take a break i'll binge wa- binge watching all the uh, Net- netflix series um sometimes i'll switch off my gadgets and just travel so these are the things i do outside uh, my work yeah so um sunya uh, since you are a marketing leader so uh, you know, let's talk little bit about uh, the the trends like the pandemic uh, has fueled a once in a generation influx into the digital marketplace changing the consumer behaviors and altering growth opportunities for marketers so what is your uh, you know thoughts when it comes to the uh, the new avatar of marketing uh, i would say during pandemic uh, we we seriously can't say post pandemic because it's the fourth wave we are talking about now so i have a slightly uh, different view uh, kalpana so if you see a um, lot of our uh, fashion also now whichever is fashion like 60 80 years before whatever has been uh, the trend that is coming as a trend again now so trends will keep changing uh, digital if you see even in digital it was a peak trend people were uh, marketers were enjoying the roi uh, in digital media like a mad but in now you say again physical events are picking up so lot of physical events because we basically are 
fortunately are like we we are social animals so we wanted to meet people network so if you ask me that will this physical events or physical marketing activities will completely go away i'll say no so we will be still in hybrid maybe as you rightly said that now we got used to living with this pandemic okay one wave will come we all need to sit two months internally then again it will stop we all need to come out so we are used to this now so the trend of both physical and digital will be there those marketers who have the knack of building an integrated marketing approach will only succeed so if you ask me the new avatar of marketing i would not call it as digital or physical rather i'll say integrated marketing approach the new avatar people understood that it is very important to plan your audience persona their themes the channels in which they are and how you will communicate through them with different messaging differently that's the new avatar of marketing now yeah, that's that's a fair point <laughs> so last but not the least india what is the message you want to convey to the aspiring women leaders and women technology i would always say that uh, don't focus on the result focus on the process the result will automatically come so unfortunately um, i'm not saying wrong about this generation but the expectation of this generation is far high so they want quick growth uh, they just come and say walk and say and feel that it will all happen in a platter unfortunately the world is very competitive and uh, i am not saying that you have to run a race and you just need to uh, run to win the race no just do the process right automatically things will fall into place just learn to course correct just go go with the flow in the beginning of the career no one knows that which is my area of interest very few you know i am fortunate enough to know that marketing is my passion in the beginning everyone may not know that but as you go what you enjoy what you don't enjoy switch the gears focus on the process learn to take small small steps do the course correction scale and pilot scale and pilot automatically you will land in your own career path absolutely so thank you so much sindhya for joining us today and i'm sure women in our audience had a great learning and will be greatly benefited with this conversation for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel